Hey friends, welcome back to another video. In this one, I just wanted to quickly explain how you can tell the difference between anterior and posterior shoulder dislocations. Now, anterior shoulder dislocations are by far the most common, accounting for about 95 to 97% of all dislocations in the shoulder, which is a pretty high percentage, but you'll find out why in a second. Why can't you just tell me now? Now, when we take x-rays, they're essentially 2D depictions of the anatomy. So how do we tell from those if it's an anterior or posterior dislocation? But what are your standard shoulder x-rays? series where you have your AP and your lateral which is quite standard and most hospitals and private practices do those and then you have some of your accessory views and actually most private practices they also do an internal and external rotation which is where from the AP you turn the patient a little bit towards the board and ask them to rotate their shoulder in for the internal rotation and then to rotate the shoulder all the way out for external rotation. And obviously the humeral head is gonna look different depending on which one you've done. And so if you don't know, the internal rotation makes the humeral head look like a light bulb. Essentially, if you were to divide it in half, it'll kind of look symmetrical. But then the external rotation view looks like a lowercase p or a q, depending on which side you're looking at. And that's actually how I like to remember it, to remember which one is which in case I forget which one I've done first, so I can do the post-processing later correctly. Anyway, so just put a pin in that. Now back to shoulder dislocations, I like to think of the mechanism of injury. So let's talk about it. Now try this at home with me yourself, get your right arm or your left arm, whichever you prefer, and we're first gonna do abduction, Okay, so going away from the body, abduction and external rotation. Okay, so do that motion, abduction, external rotation. If you were to push that to the nth degree, meaning pushing your arm back as far as it goes, where do you feel your humeral head pushing? Is it gonna come forward or is it gonna come backwards? Well, hopefully, if you try this all the way and just push as far as you can, you'll probably feel that your humeral head or your shoulder joint is gonna be popped forward. And if you think about it, this motion of abduction and external rotation, doing it in motion like that, is very similar to most sporting activities. For example, me throwing a baseball. So it's safe to say if this was the motion or mechanism of injury, then it's probably gonna result in an anterior shoulder dislocation. Now the opposite would be what? Adduction and internal rotation, right? Try that yourself, it's a bit of an awkward position. So in and down, in and down. If you were to push your arm all the way as far as you could, nth degree, your shoulder would probably feel like it's being pushed backwards. And so this motion of adduction and internal rotation is probably going to result in a posterior shoulder dislocation. Now, as you can imagine, this is a pretty awkward situation to be in. And so it usually occurs if you're in a bad position in a motor vehicle accident or an MVA, or if you have seizures. Okay, so now taking that mechanism of injury into account, if on a shoulder potential shoulder dislocation, you see a P or a Q, and it's almost dislodged from the glenoid fossa, then you're probably looking at an anterior shoulder dislocation. Again, it looks like the humeral head looks like an externally rotated shoulder. And on the other hand, if you see the light bulb sign and also it's dislodged from the glenoid fossa, then you're probably looking at a posterior shoulder dislocation. So hopefully that made sense. Again, it's not like that always. There are gonna be different severities to it, so take it with a pinch of salt. But anyways, let's look at a few examples to see if you can spot which kind of dislocation it is. I'm still confused. All right, so here we have our case one. What do you think it is? Is it a posterior or an anterior dislocation? I'll give you a few seconds to look at it. Okay, it's enough time. Okay, so what we said was that if it was an anterior dislocation, it would either look like an a P or a Q, okay, because the anterior was the more common one, and it looked like an external rotation. And if it was an internal rotation, it would look like the light bulb sign. So, and this is, by the way, just on the AP view, not looking at the lateral or anything, even though this one has both, okay? So this is obviously a right shoulder x-ray, okay? So this is the AP, and this is the lateral. Okay. But what we're interested in is the humeral head over here. So if you kind of look at it, it almost looks like a P. Okay. So this would be a anterior shoulder dislocation because it looks like it's an externally rotated shoulder. So if you got that, well done. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. So now what about this one? Again, we're looking at an AP and a lateral shoulder. This time it's of the left side. And so what do we see? If you look at the humeral head, it doesn't really look like a light bulb. In this case, it kind of looks like a Q. Okay, so if I was to exaggerate it, it'll kind of look like a Q like that. Apologies if you can hear the birds. 
So the cue is one thing, but also you can see that it's dislodged from the glenoid fossa. Okay, so this is part of the scapula where the humeral head usually sits. So it's actually gone from here and dislodged this way. And so very clearly, if it looks like a cue and it's dislodged, it's some kind of dislocation. We're saying that it's an anterior shoulder dislocation. And hopefully you got that too. And by the way, the image on the right is an attempt at a lateral. Again, this is the sort of the scapula over here. It doesn't look like an ideal scapula. It's ideally meant to look like a Y shape. Sometimes we call it a Y lateral. Okay, so we can kind of see a Y sort of shape over there. And over here actually does look like a light bulb sign, but that's on the lateral. Not interested in that, just interested on the AP. All right, so now let's move on to the next one. Ooh, okay, so what do we think about this? Now, again, what shoulder is it? This is the left shoulder and it's an AP shot. Okay, we can see the glenoid fossa over here. Okay? And if you had to look at the humeral head, what does it look like? Does it look like a P or a Q? In this case, it doesn't really look like a P or a Q because if you were to draw a line over here, it kind of looks symmetrical. Okay, and in fact, this is what the light bulb sign looks like. Okay, so if I basically had to draw a light bulb, okay, and drawing the grooves over here, etc. You get the idea, and that comes perfect. Okay, so this is the light bulb sign, and it looks like it is a what? It is a posterior shoulder dislocation. Because remember, we said that the mechanism of injury was what? Adduction and internal rotation. If you push that to the nth degree, your shoulder should feel like it's pushing backwards. Okay, so hopefully you got that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, what do we have here? Again, we have an AP and a lateral, okay? And this is of the left shoulder. Again, just focus on the AP, keep it simple. What does the humeral head look like? Right. To me, at least it looks like a Q. Terrible Q, let's try that again. It looks like a Q there, okay? So what do we know from the Q? And also, by the way, you can see easily that it's dislodged from the glenoid fossa. It, the humeral head ideally should actually be somewhere there. Okay, let's try that again. That's horrendous. Should actually be somewhere there, but it's not. It's actually just migrated over here. So dislocation looks like it's an externally rotated you know, shoulder. And external rotation, number adduction, external rotation looks like it's been pushed forward. So it's an anterior shoulder dislocation. Okay, so hopefully you're getting it. Let's move on to the last one. Okay, last one here. So just again, we're looking at the AP and this is of the left shoulder. The sin sign is actually meant to, it's actually meant to represent L, so left essentially. And what does it look like? Light bulb sign or P or a Q? Give it a second. Okay, so pro hopefully you said that it looks like a Q in this case. So you're seeing that if it's the left shoulder and it's externally rotated, it looks like a Q. And if it's the right shoulder, and if it's actually rotated, it looks like the P. That's why I said it looks like either like a P or Q, depending on which side it is. And so that, in addition to the dislodgement from the glenoid fossa, okay, means it is a what dislocation? Anterior dislocation. Well done. All right, hopefully that made sense. If you want more examples, just go on Google, type in shoulder dislocation, and see if you can identify which one it is. Given the stat that it's about 95% plus anterior shoulder dislocations, I guess you can think when in doubt it's probably anterior. However, if you see the light bulb sign or something similar to that, then it's probably posterior shoulder dislocation. All right, that's it for this one. Hopefully that made sense. And I hope now moving forward, you can kind of tell with a little bit more ease whether it's an anterior or a posterior shoulder dislocation. Hopefully you got some value out of it. Now click here to watch my other video where I critique some shoulder x-rays, which I think you'll find quite useful. All right, see you in the next one. Stay curious.